I am live? It is time. Here we go. We'll hear lost track of time for a moment or two out chatting with some good <laughs> friends. That's part of the beauty of being amongst God's people in God's house is we're friends, we're family. And I'm so very thankful to be a part of First Assembly, a place to call home. You know, I have a birth family, people that I love dearly and all that. But you're my family by choice and really get to enjoy sharing life with you and uh, welcoming new people in. So thank you for sharing and participating with us in uh, worship this morning. A couple of things to make you aware of. Monday evening, 6 o'clock here, guys get together for a time of fellowship and sharing in God's word to encourage one another and to uh, continue to support and affirm and bring out the very best in each other. Also want to make you aware, Thursday, 7 p.m., there is a ministry here called Celebrate Recovery where we encourage people and give them the tools they need to be set free from life uh, controlling addictions and struggles. People can be set free and they get to celebrate it together and celebrate recovery. That's held at 7 o'clock here on Thursdays. Uh, this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. in the uh, Fellowship Hall, we'll be having the last of our series on, uh, on identity, um, who God says we are. But starting next week, uh, we'll be starting a new series. It's called Building Blocks. It's a relationship-oriented uh, uh, study that's good for guys and girls, a little bit of insights, sharing together, celebrating the uniqueness of how God made us and brought us together. So it is um, a great tool for those that are in couples and relationships, but also if you're single, we're not going to exclude you or anything like that because it teaches principles and we all have things to learn as we uh, journey through life together. And at this time, Judy Bennett's going to come forward and share our giving scripture as we continue to worship the Lord together. Our reading comes from Hebrews 13, 5, and 6. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Would you pray with me? God in heaven, sustainer and giver of all good things, would you be honored in our giving today? Thank you for being the one who brings us the provision we need for each and every day. Today, be our guide as we give to you our time, talent, and treasure. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now we get the privilege of uh, standing up together as our worship te uh, team comes to lead us in uh, music and song. Let's join in together and celebrate. With open arms 
But God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, know it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. wonders of his love. God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. But God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved, God so loved the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I try to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things, be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher. Your plans are always good. There's not a place where I go. You haven't already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't 
I'll part the waters I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 I search the world, but it, it couldn't fill me. I'm bent empty praise the treasures that faith are gathering up. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. So there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. As a God of the mountains, as a God of the valleys, and there's not a place you'll never Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. So there's nothing better than you, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn mourning to dancing you give beauty for ashes Turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You 
turned bowls into armies. You turned seas into highways. You're the only one. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful this morning that there is nothing better than being in the presence of your Holy Spirit. There is nothing better than knowing that we get to walk in the way and the truth and the life that is set apart for us through Jesus. Lord, thank you today that you are true and you are alive. You are the redeemer of our lives. You are the one who changes us and heals us and sets us on your path. Lord, there is nothing better than you. Lord, today, be glorified. Would you be lifted high in our praises this morning as we lift you up today, Lord Jesus. Be lifted up in our voices, in our words, in our minds, our hearts, and our attitudes. Lord, be glorified today. Lord, today, as we look into your word, would your Holy Spirit come and teach us and train us Lord, may our hearts and our minds be open to taking steps closer to you, to who you are and what you're like. And Lord, the plan that you have for us today, because it is perfect. We're not, but you are. And your ways are perfect. And you take us into that perfect peace, that knowledge of knowing who you are. So today, Lord Jesus, go before us. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. And amen this morning. Happy Memorial Day weekend. If you would, grab your Bibles. Would you turn with me to Exodus? Exodus chapter 20. That's where we're going to find today. The Lord's word to us. Followers of Jesus honor God with their language. Followers of Jesus honor God 
with their language. I'm pretty sure for the last five years, I've been threatening, I'm not threatening, I've been talking faithfully about what it means to use language that is faithful in honoring God. So, if you'd look down to your left or to your right, there's a seat belt under your chair. You probably want to bring it around and click yourself in. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do? Because you know, it's one of my favorite things. Followers of Jesus honor God with their language. It's one of my favorite and least favorite things is when someone is just going for it and they're telling me a story and they're just lighting it up with their language, and then they realize, so, uh, so what do you do? <laughs> and in all honesty, I stand there and go, I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you, and go in peace. I mean, it's just one of those moments, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, bring, I've never spoken a poor word in my entire life, you know? It's like, oh boy. So, so it's one of those things, it's like, okay, so how do we talk about this? It's the fifth Sunday of the month. We have, in the past, often had family Sundays, but since kids have been so back and forth, we're trying to get them into a good groove and going to children's church and being apart. So I, I told Haley, I said, you know what? Let's keep on track with children's church. And, and let, me, let me do something I've been promised threatening for a long time. So, are you ready? Did you put that seatbelt on? Did you tighten your shoes? Tighten your belt? Tuck your shirt in? Followers of Jesus honor God with their language. And so, I'm, in my estimation, and as I've been working through, there are three ways in which we don't honor God with our language. In the New King James, and you know, as I read as a kid, it is always the taking the Lord's name in vain. What in the world does that mean? It means misusing God's name. So three, the first one, using the Lord's name in vain, misusing God's name. The second one is a word called profanity. Have you ever heard of profanity? Yes? You've probably heard profanity. You've heard lots of profanity. You just don't know what profanity is. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to save that when I got going on this and I started, you know, you probably don't. But when you start working on a subject and you start digging into it and you start building your sermon, you get to a spot and you're like, oh, I'm not even going to be able to get to that. So I'm going to save profanity. I might do it next week. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. Pro, right? i just going to scratch the surface today. It's like, oh man, nobody's coming back to church next week if he's going to do that. I won't even know what words to use when I'm talking to anyone. The Marine Corps base, your you're words are going to be limited to yes and no and sir. Yep. So, misusing the Lord's name, profanity, and then curses. Most of you are like, Pastor, I thought those were all the same thing. Nope. They're actually all different things. In fact, in some of those categories, there are words that fit into that in those categories, particularly curses, that in normal situations, it's not a bad word. It's how you use that word. Profanity is kind of the same thing. It's how you use that word. And of course, misusing the Lord's name. I am so glad for the name of the Lord. Scripture says it is our strong tower, Amen. right? It is our strong tower. So would you turn with me to Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Anybody know what Exodus is? Anybody get there? You know what it is? It's Ten Commandments, right? Yep, Ten Commandments. My daughter finds it very funny. She now says, Dad, I'm never going to call it the Ten Commandments ever again. I was like, really? Why not? She's like... When you told me that they call it in seminary the Decalogue, I can talk about the Decalogue and no one knows what I'm talking about until they've bought in too far. I was like, that's my kid. That's my kid, man. That's my kid. Okay. Until they bought in too far. They don't know what you're talking about. You say Ten Commandments, they know what you're talking about. You say Decalogue and they're like, hmm, tell me more of these 
command, these, these ten things, these, what are we talking about? Exodus chapter 20, <laughs> verse 7, here comes, you must not misuse the name of the Lord, your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you use, misuse his name. Oh, what? Did you, did you hear that? The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Oh, nuts. Maybe that's what's going wrong in the world. You ever thought about that? What happens in the world? Why, is this what's mis, mis, misusing the Lord's name? Speaking of names, I don't know about your name or what you think of my name or anything like that, but when you were growing up, did you ever have the inclination that on occasion your name might actually be misused? Did you ever think that, or maybe you had an uncle or, or maybe a parent, hopefully not, or, or maybe a cousin, when they used your name, you could, you could almost identify that they are using my name as a cuss word. They are so upset right now. So I have to probably give you um, a little bit of a warning. This sermon may be rated M for mature um, because I'm going to talk about these words. I may even use examples of these words. I am going to use examples of these words. So I just need you to be prepared and relax and enjoy this because I'm going to try to enjoy this. I always told my wife before we got married, I always said, you know, when we get a dog, <laughs> I'm going to name it, damn it. She goes, why are you going to do that? I said, because in no other situation can I open the back door and go, damn it, damn it. Trying to get us eased in, okay? Please, unfold your arms, relax. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Pastor said, damn it, at church today. Wait till you get to the end. So apologies if you are online today. Just get ready. You know, you might need to turn me down a little bit. But you thought your name was a cuss word. As I remember, I would be in the barn, and all of a sudden, I would, I, I probably wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So whether I was supposed to be getting grain or hay or feeding an animal or whatever it was I was supposed to be doing, all of a sudden, from somewhere in the barn or outside of the barn, I would hear, John William Barlow! It's like, oh, what did I just do? What just happened? What did I forget? You know what felt even better? Because that felt terrible, because you thought you were in trouble. What felt better was when you heard, Aaron James Paul, no! Yes. yes. I don't know what's wrong, but it wasn't me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Names are important to us, aren't they? I mean, don't you like it when someone uses your name? Even better, when they remember your name. When you get to church and Pam sees you and calls you by name, that's a good feeling. It's like, I don't even have my name tag yet on yet. And somebody knows my name. Which, if you're wondering, that is why we have name tags. Because we want to know you by name. We want to call you by name. And this place turns over so fast, it is hard to remember people's names. So we wear our names. How much thought, how much time do we put into thinking about baby names? Have you ever sat with somebody who's trying to come up with a baby name? You know, that first one, you know, they got a list and they're thinking about what this baby is going to be named. My kids were named specifically, you know, we took time to think about it. In fact, there were even deals that we had with our kids about who was going to get what name and how it was going to work. I have time. I have time. 
See, I made this sermon just a little bit shorter because it's Graduate Sunday, and we're going to do prayers over graduates. So I'm looking now, I'm like, I've got time. I can do this. With Anna's name, Anna was going to be Anna Sophia. I wanted her to be Sophia Ann. Because I had this weird feeling that she was going to have red hair, which she did when she was born. And I was like, you can't name a little girl Annie who has red hair, and it's probably going to be curly. You, you just can't do that to a kid. You just can't. And so I had this deal with my wife. When, when the baby's born, if she has red hair, you know, we'll, we'll name her Sophia Ann. And, and if you know, she has blonde hair or brown hair, you know, that's really our two options. And then we'll name her Anna Sophia. Well, as you know, she's Anna Sophia. She was born with red hair and still has pretty red hair. Well, when she was born, you know, the nurse bring her out and they get her all cleaned up. And I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, she had red hair, like somewhere between Carlos's shirt and well, I was pretty close to Carlos's shirt. It was really, really red. I was like, yes, Sophia Ann. Because Sophia in the Greek means wisdom. Anna means grace. So you have grace and wisdom. Or you have wisdom and grace. And I was like, I'm such a good theologian. (laughs) So good. So they bring the baby, they bring Anna over to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth looks at her, and you can see, and you know, she's just given birth, and you can see the look on her face because she really wanted to name the baby Anna. And you know, you can see it starting to happen, and it's like, Looks like she's going to be Anna. It doesn't matter what I think. (laughs) Didn't matter a lick. I thought something was going to happen. Nope. I had no say in the matter, really. I didn't know that. So names are really important. They mean something deeply to us as human beings. So when we take a look here in Exodus, and we're going to talk just about misusing the Lord's name just about misusing how we refer to God. So in this situation, in Exodus 20, verse 7, it is one of the top four, one of the first four, where God is telling his people, hey, these are the ones that matter to me. Right? No idols. I'm the first. Don't misuse my name and take the Sabbath off. Right? Those are his. So when it comes to this one, when he says, don't misuse my name, ready for your $50 seminary word? The Tetragrammaton. (laughs) Woo! Yeah, doesn't that make you feel smart? The Lord's name is Yahweh. It's Yahweh because when he talked to Moses from the burning bush, he said, I am that I am. Yahweh means I am. Remember in John when we were working through that and when Jesus would say, I am the bread of life, he was saying, I am the Lord God that sustains you. That's what Jesus was saying. So here, to use Yahweh, I am. Now I am quite certain that I have never heard anyone use Yahweh in a curse. I don't think I've ever heard anyone do an explicative with the Lord's name. And while I was doing the study, and you know, I'm looking through books, and I'm I'm doing commentary, I figured out why. Do you know why? Well, it, it says right there, the Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name, right? Do you know why you've never heard anyone say that? Because they're hit by lightning as soon as they do it. That's a joke. Some of you are like, oh, oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> you're thinking about it now. You're like, it never rains here. We're fine. <laughs> we'll be good. But there is, I've never heard it, and I think there is something to even us as people that we don't hear that happening. I'm not 100% sure why. So it's like, okay, so we're in a good spot there. I've never heard anyone use Yahweh in a curse. The Hebrews and the Jews, they were really careful not to misuse the Lord's name. So instead of using his name, whether they were reading scripture or whether they were offering prayers, 
they didn't use Yahweh. What they would use is they would use Adonai. Yahweh means I am. Adonai means he is. So you didn't use his name when you called him Adonai. So if you actually listen to Jews pray out loud, they will pray to Adonai. That is the name they will regularly use in their prayers. And I thought, oh, that was a really good idea. Nobody's getting hit, hit by lightning when you do that. But it means he is. It was smart. It was a good, a good way to follow the law and not do something wrong on accident. But that's kind of the way the law works, right? The law, you know, you, breaking the law and having things that are right and having things that are wrong. You have to be careful in the law. In Exodus 20, this is the law. We're talking specifically about law. Why? Because it's the ultimate rule. It's the Decalogue. It's the Ten Commandments, man. This is the standard. It was the ultimate rule. Because God is holy. He is set apart. He is other. So when we address him, when we set our lives to follow after him, it's serious. Because he's holy. He's perfect. We set our lives after him and we set him apart and he sets us apart. He consecrates us as his own children. So not only is he holy, not only is he sacred, so is his name, so is his day, so is our actions towards him. So he sets us apart as his children. So we become a part of what he is doing in this world. We become the set apart ones. A priesthood, right? A holy nation. You become a part of what God does sacredly. Not to be used for anything but worship and address to God. Now I say God. We say God, right? Very rarely do I use Adonai, right? That's not really a part of our language and understanding. Yahweh or Adonai, we don't usually use those. What do we use when we are talking about God? We use God, right? Right. So when we're talking about God, it is almost like his title. We know what we're talking about. As Christians, as those who are gathered together, we use God, right? We also use Jesus, right? We use the Holy Spirit. We use God. So then we, we, we enter into this interesting place where our language and our culture, although they don't use the name Yahweh or Adonai, they do use God, right? Oh my God. Ermagerd. Omega. There are so many different ways that it is said that it's like, wait, did they just say that? Did they not say that? I'm not actually sure what's happening right here, but it becomes an explicative. Well, pastor, that's not really the name of God, is it? Well, no, it isn't. We know his name. We know the name of God. But in our regular con conversation, when we pray, when we sing, when we offer praise to God, we use the word God, right? So what does it mean for us when we're talking about God? It's not his name. It shouldn't be a big deal, Pastor. But it is because we use it. Right. We use it as his name. We're talking now about a person and not a law. So it's not about breaking the law. It's not about this letter that's been written in stone, quite literally. It is about a person that we are in direct fellowship with. Someone that we talk to, that we pray to. When we get in trouble, we call out on the name of Jesus. We call out, oh God, help me. That is what we do. So what do we do when it comes down to these explicatives and using God? We're talking about a person. We're talking about God. We're talking about literally what we call him, our name for him, right? It's really not that dissimilar from things that I have talked about before. What is my name? Pastor! 
My name is Pastor, remember? Blake told us. No, his name is Pastor, right? My name is Pastor, right? Is that my name? No, I don't write it down anywhere except for birthday cards and giving statements. So if you ever get anything in the mail, it's got my scribble on there that says Pastor John. I don't even write my last name, which is pronounced Paulno, right? People call me by my name, and it's weird, right? My name is Pastor. If I go to the high school and I'm on the school side council, they refer to me as Mr. Paulno. No, they refer to me as Mr. Polnow, <laughs> right? Can't help them. You know, it's written right there on the Zoom screen. <laughs> Mr. Polnow, meeting at school. And there was one day, you know, I do have some friends on that council, and somebody said, John. And the, <laughs> it was funny because in the Zoom conference, it was quiet. Because there's only one other person named John, and they were trying to figure out who are we talking to and what are we talking about. We're talking about me, John. I'm John. You know that moment, I don't know if you've ever watched The Lord of the Rings, where Frodo uses Gollum's real name when he says Smeagol, and Smeagol goes, my name, my name. He had forgotten his name. You want to hear the voice? You want to hear the voice. I can see it right there. You're like, my name. Look at that. Even like a good actor, I spit when I said it. How about that? <laughs> Woo! It's a good day. Gollum hears his name. It is a special moment when someone looks at you and says, hey, John, <gasps> my name. That's my name. And it's kind of the same way, not really even close, but it's similar. When we say, God, if you were to start using my name as an explicative when you were angry, do you think I might get upset? Would you get upset? Oh, son of a pastor! <laughs> Everybody's like, wait, what? But if you think about it, that's what we're talking about, right? Right? If you started using my name, oh, pastor, damn it. Dude, I swear on my pastor's head. No, you can't. You can't swear on my head. Are you catching up? You're probably getting this, right? We're, we're doing okay? Yeah, we're doing okay. Maybe not. Some of you might be offended. That's okay. I don't know. I think it just looks funny because I have written in here, John, damn it. I'm like... <laughs> what I'm doing. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> How do we refer to the Lord? How do we talk to the Lord? How do we talk to God? We don't really necessarily call him Yahweh, but we do call him our God and our King. We call him by the name of Jesus. We talk to the Holy Spirit. We're talking now about a holy person who loves us with an unfailing love, with an undying love, someone who left the perfect of heaven to come to earth and die a horrible, painful death. Why? Because of their love for us. How can we even possibly think of misusing that kind of love? How can we even, and now, I don't want you to feel guilty. Everybody's like, oh, church is always full of guilt. I'll just tell you right now, hey, you know what? I'm guilty too. I am a person. I have mashed my thumbs with hammers. I have banged my shins on, what do they call that? The tail, the receiver on the back of the truck. We're talking about a person who loves us, who died that we can be in right standing. So what's our job? What's our job? What are we supposed to do? I remember I was working on a farm. When I was 13, I went to work for a neighbor's dairy. And uh, I was shoveling lime. Lime is what you use in a, in a, in a milk house and in, and in the dairy to keep the flies down, to keep the moisture out. You'd shovel lime in there. 
and I was shoveling. He was an older guy, so I was the young help there, and I was shoveling lime into the, into the lime bin. I'm using words none of you have any. The bottom of the barn had a, had a big tub, and I was putting dirt in there, white dirt. And as I was moving along, he was standing there talking to me. His name was Tom, and Tom was standing there talking to me, and I know he was waiting for it because he grew up on this farm, and as I'm shoveling this lime, I'm getting closer and closer to the edge of the barn, standing in the back of the truck, and I came up and just, dunk, whacked my head hard, and, you know, took a knee, and he comes over, and he looks over the bed of the truck, And he never heard it. He was waiting for it. He was waiting to hear what the church kid would say. Back then, I had really good control of my lips. <laughs> I'm not nearly that good anymore. There's that threat of still living in your mama's house that takes all bad words and just, you just shove those things in there and keep them in there. Didn't say anything. And I think about those moments, and I think about those times and that he was just enthralled. He thought I was Amish. No kidding. He really did. He's like, are you Amish? No. I thought about how do, we, how do we start to deal with this? How do we start to deal with our use of language? If truly followers of Jesus honor God with their language, we need some discipline. Anybody ever have a swear jar? Nobody had a swear jar. They must only use those on the movies now, yeah. that there's a swear jar on the, on the counter. You still have one. Jason fills it up all the time. I hear you. <laughs> it's a spending money, huh? I always thought that that money should go to the church, Right? I don't know. It's time for us to learn some discipline. If this is true, if this is true, the Lord will not let you go unpunished in the misuse of his name. I'm pretty sure that means specifically Yahweh. But in the rest of our language, we have to stop stomping on the name of our Lord. It's time to stop running it over with the truck and the mud. It's time for some discipline. Would you use your mama's name like that? Used to have a boy's leader, a boy scout leader that used to say, you kiss your mama with those lips? Would you use your mama's name like that? No, of course not. So what does this mean? Turn with me to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9. This is where we're going to start. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says... Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Fear of the Lord. Not to be afraid of God because He's going to punish you for misusing His name. But in all reality... Fear of the Lord means the highest level of respect, the highest level of honor. What is that highest level of honor? How do we honor the Lord with our words? If you pray to the Lord, if you are asking the Lord Jesus, if you're going to go to him and use that mouth to ask for help or for healing or for blessing, how can you in turn do the opposite? How can you use it for cursing? How can you use it in a manner that is unworthy of a holy, sacred God? I know this is a tall order. I do. I think part of it is because we've let it slip. Right? We've let it slip in our language. 
I remember my first week of high school. There's not a lot I remember of the, my first week of high school, but I remember what I heard in high school. We, we, had neighbors, we had neighbors that were farmers that could just swear a blue streak, but I had never, ever heard this phrase before. Or someone, would, it, it, was, it was in the hallway somewhere. And, you know, I was a little skinny white kid, you know, that was brought up on the farm. I didn't hear a lot of bad words. And I'm in the hallway, and I heard someone, something happened, and someone screamed, Jesus effing Christ. Poor little me almost broke down and cried. But I think about that a lot. How could you take the name of the one who brings you salvation, who brings you faith and hope and love, who changes your life, how could you do that to that name? Well, of course, they don't know what that name means. They don't know the fullness and the goodness of how good Jesus is. Now, I'm not a purist. If someone says Jesus in anger or surprise in a movie, I don't turn the movie off. Not like that. But in my own life, to bring that explicative under control. To bring, oh my God, under control. The name of Jesus under control. Don't think anybody really swears about the Holy Spirit. That would sound weird. But you know, but have you ever heard anybody say, ah, oh, Vishnu? No, that doesn't work. Or, Buddha! No, that doesn't work either. But for some reason, when they say Jesus, why does that work? Because it is the name that is above every other name. Because it is the name that makes demons flee. And if you're going to take it and you're going to desecrate it, it's going to mean something to the other side. It is really, truly the use of the enemy. So protect it. Discipline it. Take care of that name of Jesus. Because in prayer we call out. When we speak the name of Jesus, it's for help. It's in Him and through Him we are made and called daughters and sons of the Most High. The enemy flees at the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It stops sin. It stops destruction. When you use it in faith, it's what you believe about that name. Other people use it. Who cares? If they're not followers of Jesus, it doesn't matter. But for us as believers, it matters life and death. It is the death and the life of Jesus, the one that we put first. Why would you use it like a bathroom mop? Followers of Jesus honor God with their language. So when do we use the name? Okay, pastor, we got it. You know, we got we to gotta get control of our language. We understand what we need to do. But what do we do conversely? Well, what we do in church. When we use the name of Jesus, we use the name of, name of Jesus in prayer regularly. We worship the name of Jesus. When I'm talking to music leaders, it's always, is the name of Jesus in the song? Is it very obvious who we are praising and worshiping when we sing our songs? I had a lady come up a couple of years ago afterwards. She goes, you know, that was really something. I was like, uh, thank you. She goes, I haven't heard someone use the name of Jesus from the pulpit in a very long time, at least that many times. And I thought, that's a tragedy. If there is a place where we are to be using the name of Jesus, it's right here, man. Amen. It's right here to call on the name of Jesus, to worship and to praise, to be thankful to Jesus for who he is and what he has done for us. 
to be faithful in prayer, to be faithful because he is faithful. Now, if you think about this, about the number of times that we have misused the name of God and he still loves us, brings a whole new meaning to his mercy never fails. His love endures forever, even through our own stupidity. In fact, you know, I should probably grab this sermon. I should probably preach this sermon at least once a year. I mean, really, at least once a year. Well, now it's on Facebook. It'll be on YouTube for your viewing pleasure at the end of this. The name of Jesus gives hope to the hopeless. That regardless of what you have done, God loves you. And he is waiting to take you in and consecrate you and make you a part of his family, a daughter and a son of the Most High. That is what he is ready to do. He gives us hope. He fills us with joy. He takes our despair and walks with us. The name of Jesus. Jesus, help me. Jesus, show me. Jesus, lead me. Followers of Jesus honor God with their language in your homes today. It's time to start talking about how do we protect the name of Jesus. How do we start to protect our reference to the Almighty? How do we do that in our homes between you as couples or even as a single as yourselves? It's time to start thinking about how do I honor God? How am I going to honor God with my language? How do I need to change my language? And you're like, oh, pastor, I thought this sermon was going to be over when I got out of here. <laughs> In your homes today, it's time to start talking about how do we protect our own use of God, of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit. And that's just the first in a series. Coming soon is profanity. What it means to profane holy things. You can look that up if you want, or you just save it. And after profanity, it's curses. How do we curse people? Why do we curse people? Made in the image of God, we're going to curse them with our language. With words they won't forget. Why is that? Why does that happen? That's coming soon. Would you bow your head with me this morning? Lord Jesus, today, we want to take you seriously, Lord. We want to give honor to your name so that the words of our mouth are like the hope of salvation to everyone we come in contact with. Lord, that we become truly the children of God called by your name. Children of God. Lord, today we repent. We are sorry for misusing your name. We are sorry for making a mockery and dishonoring who you are. Forgive us. Let us start today a new day, bringing honor to your name. I pray this in the mighty, holy, powerful, life-giving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning as we sing a closing song together? Amen. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I've never let you go. You've taken me from my reclaim. Friend, I will worship you. 
you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I'll never let you go. You've taken me Pastor John and his wife Amy will be at the front to pray. If you would like prayer for healing, for agreement, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, they'll be at the front ready to pray with you and for you. A blessing for you this morning. May he who is your light, your strength and your song, your cornerstone, prepare you for the fiercest drought and storm. May he quiet your fears and cease your strivings that you may know the heights of his love and the depths of his peace. Church, today I bless you as you go in fellowship with God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Go wash your hands. Stick around a little bit. Drink some coffee. It tastes really good. If you need prayer, John and Amy are at the front. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I'll never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay.